Ja, das Video war klar, Aloha 73, Audio, also die komplette Bandvorstellung vom 10. Juni 75, Memphis mit South Coliseum. The audio we heard was from Memphis from uh, June 10th, uh, 1975. Okay. I had to read that, <laughs> I haven't heard it. <laughs> uh, before Claudia, uh, Claudia continues, I have uh, a question to each of you. Uh, Ronnie. Did you know the name or the person, Jerry Schiff, before you started with Elvis? Did I know Elvis before? No. Did you know Jerry before you worked with Elvis? No. No. I've he asked if I knew you before we played the <laughs> <laughs> What's your name again? Nein, er kannte ihn also nicht. Jerry, uh, similar questions. Did you know Glenn before? I never met Glenn in my life before. <laughs> Er hat ihn noch nie getroffen vorher. Ronnie, Ronnie came down, I, we were re rehearsing. Do you mind if I tell this story? Go ahead. Yeah. So, he came down and there were other drummers playing and uh, there was one drummer that uh, all of uh, Elvis's, like Red West and Sunny West and all those guys, they all thought that, that uh, this drummer was the best one. And Larry Mahoberak, who was playing piano, said, well, my friend from, from Dallas, Ronnie Tett, is here. And Ronnie had been sitting over in the corner. And all of Elvis's, all Red West and all of his guys said, we're going, <sighs> like, oh, we don't want to hear another drummer, you know. And Elvis said, no, 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 let him play, you know. So Ronnie set up his drums and came up and played. And the, other, the first drummer that thought he had the job, his face went, because... <laughs> Because he heard Ronnie, and the, the minute he heard him, he knew that Ronnie had the job. Also Ronnie hatte sich vorgestellt und hatte äh, eben vorgespielt. Die Leute um Elvis rum, seine Freunde und so weiter, hatten sofort gesagt, er ist es. Und da war aber vorher noch jemand anderes, der sich vorgestellt hatte, der den äh, Job eigentlich schon dachte, sicher zu haben. Der st stand daneben, als Ronnie spielte und seine Farbe wechselte zusehends. Also, Ronny hat den Job natürlich nachher gekriegt. I think Jerry's mistaken about the fact that we had never met before. Uh, it's been many, many years ago, you know. But we played on some Gary Paxton demos. Do you remember that? You're wrong. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we, we did. I do That's remember. right. But just uh, very briefly, yeah, a couple of hours or something. Yeah, yeah. But uh, I had nearly forgotten That's that, good. too. Yeah. But so there you are, my boy. Also Glenn sagte, ähm, Jerry dachte, er hätte Glenn noch nicht gekannt vorher, aber die haben schon mal zusammen gespielt für ein Demo. Und ähm, naja, sie ziehen sich hier gegenseitig auf. Alles kann ich auch nicht übersetzen. When did that happen? Also ist schwer. In the 60s? Das ist schwer. Or, excuse me. Back in the 60s? What was the name again? Gary Paxton? Paxton, oh ja. Yeah. Also sie haben schon zusammen gespielt mit Gary Paxton. Irgendwann in den 60er Jahren. Wir haben sich jetzt gerade gegenseitig ausgetauscht. Okay, Claudia. Okay, ich habe da noch eine Frage. Um, this might sound a little bit naughty to you, but as Elvis musicians, have you ever had so-called groupies, girls that wanted to meet him and do anything for it? Also ich habe gefragt, ob es damals auch für diese Jungs Groupies gab, die alles getan hätten, um Elvis kennenzulernen. Tomor tomorrow is Ronnie's 28th wedding anniversary. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Morgen ist Ronnie's 28. <laughs> ich glaube, da übrigt sich jede Frage. Um, to each one of you, what do you think is the best Elvis song ever? What is your total favorite? I know my favorite. Can, can you hear me? Yeah. Uh, are you lonesome tonight for me? 
I think, uh, I don't know whether you'd call this an Elvis song, but I like to play and listen to Elvis sing uh, Bridge Over Troubled Water. That's my favorite. The, I don't really have a favorite. Some of the songs are more uh, demanding and difficult to play from my point of view than others, such as Suspicious Mind, such as Poke Salad Annie, such as Patch It Up, very difficult. Uh, but to me, the most emotional song that he ever sang, the one that really grabbed me emotionally on stage, was uh, a Kui Lee song he did on, um, it was about a song about a man who was dying softly as I leave you. So, it's very powerful. Also, was Ronnie eben am besten findet, was sehr ihm ans Herz geht, ist dieses softly as I leave you. Jerry mag am liebsten, oh. Das war Bridge over troubled water. Entschuldigung, ich bin einfach nervös. Das ist nicht das Normale, was ich sonst so tue. Ähm, ich komme einfach mal zur nächsten Frage. <lacht> ähm, auf Bootlegs hören wir oft, wie Elvis dann Witze macht und ziemlich locker drauf ist. Ich wollte die Jungs mal fragen, ob die überhaupt mal gearbeitet haben. Ähm, on Bootlegs, you can hear Elvis joking all the time at the recordings. Did you ever get to work? No. I've got a, another question of a fan. How did the band members get on with the colonel? My mother told me if you can't say anything nice, don't say anything at all. Seine Mutter hat ihm gesagt, wenn er nichts Nettes sagen kann, soll er gar nichts sagen. When you would have to choose an artist today, which one would come very close to Elvis in your opinion? Wenn es heute einen Star gäbe, den ihr euch aussuchen könntet, den es jetzt gibt, wer käme sehr nah an Elvis dran? I can't, I'll let everybody speak, but there's, there's nobody like him. I mean, they're, they're great, I, I mean, I've been with Mr. Diamond now for 20 years, and I have a lot of respect for his achievements and his talent. But he's, he's not Elvis, and Elvis is not him. He's more of, there's a lot of great writers, you know, songwriters. But as far as the whole package of being singer, personality, charisma, which he had more than anyone I've ever known, there's nobody like him. Also Ronnie sagte, er arbeitete für arbeitet für Neil Diamond. Ähm, Ein Vergleich gibt es wirklich nicht. Jeder ist auf seine Art vielleicht gut, aber niemand kommt an Elvis dran. Egal, ob es jetzt um Charisma geht, um das Können. Niemand kommt an Elvis dran. And, and you worked uh, with many famous names. We mentioned that before. You have with many famous names. You have worked with many famous names. You have worked with many famous names. You have names. But we know. Okay. Thank you. Was there any city that Elvis preferred to others on tour, and why? City? city. Any cities that you toured? Was there anything he preferred to anything else? I, I would have to say Las Vegas. I think he liked Las Vegas. He also, liked uh, performing there, and uh, I know that he went there uh, before he started performing there, he liked to go there. So. Ich habe also gefragt, ob es irgendeine Stadt gab, die Elvis besonders gern besuchte auf seinen Tourneen. Und Jerry sagte also, Las Vegas war sein Favorit. I think Atlanta, Georgia was a very powerful single city to do single concerts. We went there many times. Atlanta, Georgia wurde auch oft besucht und war auch sehr beliebt bei Elvis. Um, some of you took breaks performing for Elvis. Can you tell us why? Some what? Um, took breaks for, um, you know, you haven't been on stage with Elvis all the time. Yeah, Jerry has taken a break for two years, I think. I, I didn't hear 
Yeah. Some of us have taken breaks from re working with Elvis. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, I took, a, I took about a two-year break, and uh, it was for personal reasons, and uh, Elvis was very loyal, and during that time, uh, well, maybe twice, he called and wanted to know if, uh, if I wanted to come back, and then uh, uh, the time came, and I, my personal problems were taken care of, so I went back, immediately went back to work with him, <laughs> as soon as I could. Jerry hat also Pause gemacht und ähm, hatte seine persönlichen Gründe dafür. Elvis hat ihn also mehrmals angerufen in der Zeit und ihn gebeten, wiederzukommen. Und irgendwann ist er dann einfach zurückgekehrt, weil er konnte nicht anders. On the recording of a concert in Las Vegas, which, how far I know, was the 18th of February 1973, We heard a lot of uh, goings on in the audience. The story goes that three men stormed the stage that night and Elvis kicked them back in the audience. Can you remember what happened there? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Would you please tell me? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> no. I'm going to let Jerry tell you. <laughs> yeah, there, were, there was a table, right? in front of the stage and there were some people from uh, I think they were from South America and one of the men uh, jumped up like he was going to uh, shake hands with uh, wanted to shake hands with Elvis and he started coming up on the stage and J.D. Sumner uh, the bass singer shoved him back down and he fell on the table because J.D. thought that he was going to attack Elvis and so The rest of the people at the table got very angry and the men started coming up on the stage. And uh, Red West and Sonny came out to take care of these men that were coming up on the stage. And Elvis was, Charlie Hodge had a hold of Elvis. And Elvis was going, let me at them, let me at them, you know. But he wasn't really going to get, he knew everything was, was okay. But then the next day in the newspaper, it said, Elvis Presley is a karate expert. And Jerry Sheff, his bass player, instead of J.D. Sumner, is also a karate expert. And the two of them held off a whole, a whole crowd of gangsters trying to come up on the stage. <laughs> also, ich erkläre noch mal kurz. Ich habe also gefragt, bei einem Konzert in Las Vegas, soweit ich weiß, am 18.02.1973, ähm, hört man eine Menge... Theater im Publikum und so und ich wollte einfach wissen, ob das stimmt, dass diese drei Männer versucht haben, Elvis zu attackieren. Ähm, Jerry hat erzählt, vor der Bühne war ein Tisch, da haben also Leute aus Südamerika gesessen und ein Mann kam auf diesen Tisch und ging auf die Bühne und es muss einfach für J.D. Sumner ausgesehen haben, als wenn dieser Mann versucht, Elvis zu attackieren und mit einem Tritt hat er ihn wieder ins Publikum befördert. Ähm, natürlich waren die anderen Freunde dann nicht so amüsiert darüber und haben auch versucht, auf die Bühne zu kommen. Aber die Sache wurde dann geregelt. Nur nächsten Tag in der Zeitung stand dann, anstatt äh, J.D. Sumner stand drin, dass Jerry und Elvis zusammen mit Karate versucht haben, diese Leute alle zu machen. Und das war nicht ganz die Tatsache. Claudia, gerade zwischendurch noch an. Wir haben noch einen anderen. Uh The time, March 20th, 1974, the place, Memphis, Mid-South Coliseum. The person in question is Glenn D. Harden. Peter, can we hear that? On the piano is Glenn D. Harden. Glenn. What kind of a name is D. Harden? I've never heard of it. Glenn, it's two words? Oh, I thought it was one word. Glenn D. Harden. It's not? Okay. Also Elvis hat Glenn nach seinem zweiten Vornamen befragt, darum ging's. Der hatten wir ja auch schon gefragt. Glenn D. Harden, also wie man es schreibt, D-E-E, -E, nicht nur D-Punkt. Okay. That's right. <lacht> okay, keine Fragen mehr. Wir haben noch einen, da geht es auch um Glenn D. Harden. Von 1975. The time, 
December 13, 1975, the place Las Vegas Hilton, but a Glenn D. Hardin solo, so that you don't have to listen so carefully. Ein Glenn, Hardin, Glenn D. Hardin solo, der Peter braucht immer etwas Zeit, um es zu finden, der muss ja anwählen. Okay, wir sind alle gespannt, was wir da hören, ist ja ein Konzert, das gab es ja zum Teil von, uh, von RCA, diese beiden Songs. Remember the songs Softly As I Leave You are from that same concert and America the Beautiful, two uh, very rarely uh, played songs. By Elvis. That's Jerry. No, that's Jerry. <laughs> Softly as I leave you. <laughs> My version. Yeah, okay. After that, uh, We want you to talk to each other. Maybe some memories are coming up, and just some memories. We've just spent a month together. We don't like each other. We have just spent a month together. We don't like each other. Yeah, we wanted to have more, also not this question and answer game that we two just did at the beginning, but that the 30 will inspire each other. But have you heard what came out of that? Okay. Okay, come on. The piano from Lubbock, Texas, ladies and gentlemen, is Glenn Hardin. Bereitest doch gleich den nächsten vor, es hat noch etwas Zeit, nur dass er bereit ist, Peter. Okay, danke. When you think uh, back of the uh, seven years or more or less seven years uh, you worked with Elvis, um, what was the greatest thing for each of you? <laughs> On stage or with Elvis as a person? Well, one of the most exciting memories that I have would be doing the Aloha special because it was the first time a single concert was seen around the world simultaneously. So that was, had huge proportions of uh, expectation and pressure and Up to that point, I think the largest concert we ever did was at the Pontiac Silver Dome for around, what was that, 100,000 people or something like that in the round, which is a lot of people, but, but millions in the Aloha special was one of the most exciting things. And I mean, we all received personal uh, accolades and recognition for what we were doing. But I think we were all there just to, uh, just to support him. You know, that was our purpose as being a band. We're a group of individuals that make, came together as a band to support him, no matter what. Also, das größte, Bernhard hat gefragt, was war das größte Ereignis für euch persönlich, was Elvis betraf. Und Ronny sagte also, das größte für ihn war das Aloha-Konzert. Ähm, es war einfach das Großartigste, was man sich vorstellen kann mit Elvis. Allein ihn zu begleiten und dabei zu sein und alles, es war einfach großartig, unbeschreiblich. 
Same question to you. Same question. <laughs> My, my favorite uh, moment, I can pin it down to one second, was the opening night in Las Vegas in 1969. And uh, Elvis, he, he hadn't performed live very much up until that time for a long time. And he was very nervous. He didn't, wasn't really sure whether the people we're still going to love him, you know? And so we were in the dressing room before the show and he was very nervous. His leg was moving like this and his hand and he was talking and, and we were all sort of, you know, we just talking to one another and having a drink of something and getting ready to go on. And we all walked out on this, we got set up and they started the show and Elvis came out and started singing and the crowd just went crazy and his face changed right at that second when the audience started saying we love you we love you and his face changed and it just got like like a just uh, ten shades lighter like it was just and he was he knew the people loved him still and that was my favorite moment was watching that as a Jerry's Jerrys größter Moment mit Elvis war das Eröffnungskonzert in Las Vegas 1969. Ähm, Elvis war sehr nervös, bevor er aufgetreten ist. Er zappelte und redete sehr viel und keiner wusste, wie, er, wie man ihn so nehmen soll. Er war furchtbar nervös. Als er auf die Bühne kam, hat er gesagt, das ist der Moment, ähm, wo das Publikum ihm die Liebe zurückgab. Wo er, wo er spürte, dass sein Publikum ihn braucht. Ähm, sein Gesicht wurde einfach zehnmal heller und strahlender, als es je zuvor war. Das war eben Elvis für ihn. Oh, my turn. Okay. Uh, you know, I guess uh, Aloha was my very favorite time. Um, because we had several days in Hawaii. Uh, maybe we had a whole week, I can't remember. Yeah, a week. Uh, and uh, that's, you know, Hawaii's <laughs> wonderful, you know. I always think of grass skirts, and lawnmower. <laughs> grass skirts and lawnmowers. Lawnmower, yeah, yeah. grass skirts. Uh, but there was a favorite moment, and I might have told you this when I was here a couple of years ago. Uh, we were in Las Vegas one time, and we were walking down that hallway toward backstage, uh, Elvis and a bunch of guys and, and myself, and uh, I told him that Are You Lonesome Tonight was, was my favorite record that he ever did, and uh, it certainly was one of my favorite records of all time. And he said thank you and all of that, and uh, somewhere during the, the show that night, he just turned around to the piano and he said, uh, play me a C chord. And I did that and he said, this is for you, pal. And he sung, Are You Lonesome Tonight? Yeah. <laughs> also, Glenn sagte, was sein äh, schönster Moment war, war unter anderem natürlich das Aloha Konzert. Er liebt also Grasröckchen und Rasenmäher. Kein Problem. Ähm, Außerdem hatte er äh, in Las Vegas eben Elvis mal erzählt, dass sein Lieblingslied I Alone Some Tonight ist. Und äh, Elvis hat sich das gemerkt, hat gesagt, spiel mir einfach ein C auf der Bühne. Und dann sagte er, und dieses Lied ist extra für dich und hat ihm das extra gesungen an dem Abend. Peter, können wir das hören? Jetzt geht's um uh, Ronnie und Jerry. Uh, the place in Tusca uh, Tuscaloosa, Alabama, 1976, August 30th. On the drums okay. from Dallas, Texas, is hard work and run it tut.
Show off. Smart Lily. And on the Fender Bass from Los Angeles is Jerry Schiff. Play the blues, Jerry. nightmares that sound like that. <laughs> you ever want to know what an earthquake feels like? That's it. So fühlt sich ein Erdbeben an. Ja, nicht diese Albträume, ne? Er hat vorhin während des Lief gesagt, er hat keine Idee. Wir haben zwar das Datum, aber keine Idee, was was da abgelaufen ist. Uh, if you compare um, the concerts between 69 and, and 77. Um, did it happen uh, very often that uh, you all played solo longer or not so long or? I, I think <clears throat> in the early days of 69 and so forth, it was only a verbal introduction. He was just a spoken introduction. As time grew on, he became more and more Personally, I think we became, all became better friends, and he had a respect of our musicianship. So doing a solo accomplished two things. One, it, he could show off his musicians, the individual talent of the musicians, and number two, it gave him a chance to rest and catch his breath. Also, um, the musicians were asked if zwischen 69 und 77 irgendwie einen ähm, Unterschied gab, was die Solis betraf. Und Ronny sagte, also später wurde eben zwei Dinge damit geäußert. Einmal, ähm, dass er äh, Elvis selber gerne vorführte, was für gute Musiker er hatte. Und zweitens einfach, um zwischendurch auch mal zu Atem zu kommen. Uh, one question before. Have you all seen the new uh, version of Elvis? That's the way it is? Okay. Your impressions of that movie compared with the old one? Glenn. Hello. Uh, there we go. Uh, I think it's so much better than the old one. Uh, I must say, I, th I thought the old one was just terrible. You know? also, so anything would be an improvement. 
Glenn, so Glenn antwortet jetzt. Also, ähm, wir hatten gefragt, was sie davon halten, von der neuen Version von That's the way it is. Und Glenn sagt, die alte war einfach fürchterlich. Die neue ist besser. But I like the new one. It's, it's good.